in this we welcome you to monday morning praise monday morning praise start at 10 45 a.m where we come into the studio and we give god praise for all that he has done and all he's about to do in our life second announcement is on friday friday night is our watch night prayer where we come together standing in the gap praying for the nation praying for our loved ones praying for our family and the leaders across the globe we need prayer so if you desire to, to, to come and join us on the platform in prayer you can inbox me and uh, we'll send the link to you so you can join us uh, and pray for our nation because we definitely need the hand of God in our nation. And also, um, we have started our um, scripture talk. Scripture talk is the time where we come together and we discuss and we talk about God's wonders and God's goodness. It is important for us to come together to really talk about the things of God. And uh, also, we also talk about things that we go through in life. Each one of us face trials, each one of us face situation, and it's only the word of God by the Spirit will be able to cause us to walk in victory. So join us every Tuesday of each month, uh, the, the second Tuesday of each month, where we we start at nine. Uh, we start at nine p.m. and on every third Thursday of uh, each month, third, third Thursday, we also start at nine. Uh, so join us on uh, Scripture Talks. Praise the name of the living God. I want to say welcome to each and every one, and we thank you for tuning in to SOW, Student of the Word, where the Word of God is preached, hallelujah, and in, in order for us to be equipped and to be built up and to be mature in this generation, to give a Word of God to someone who needs uh, uh, the help of God. So we want to thank you very, very much for following us on Facebook and also on YouTube. Today is an exciting day, I must say. Yes, I pray that all had a wonderful weekend. Even though you may face trials or even though that uh, you were victorious, God is still in control. Hallelujah. So let's just pray. Hallelujah. Father God, we give you praise. <laughs> oh God, you are worthy. Lord, there is none like unto thee, Lord. So we lift our hands unto you, O oh God, as a sign, O oh God, of surrender, as a sign, O oh God. We humble ourselves to you, Lord. Father, you see everything. You know everything, God. Lord, you're omniscient. You're all, O oh God, everywhere in one place, God. Lord, where can we hide from your presence? Holy Ghost, let your word Reach someone's heart today, God. Touch lives. Open eyes. Lord, those who are lame, cause them to walk. Those who are on the bed, God, cause them to be arise, God, in the name of Jesus. Father, Lord, as we go into your word, oh, Lord. Lord, oh, God, unfold it unto us, Lord, that we may understand. Lord, even understand, God, that we will walk in it, that you have called us to walk. In the name of Jesus, hallelujah. As you know, it's our Monday morning praise. It's a time of thanking God for everything that God has done for you. Mm. Hallelujah. You want to say, well, why are you so shouting and all this drama? Let me tell you something. When you know that God is on your side, in spite of, in spite of our weakness, in spite of our shortcoming, God still loves us. Hallelujah. The covenant that God had made with Abraham, hallelujah, I'm a part of it. And I pray that you will be a part of it also. So at the end of our session today, we'll have uh, our, our doors be open. If you want to be a part of the things of God, 
you want to enjoy the benefit that we have, we welcome you. We welcome you with our arms open wide in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You know, I was about to sing a song, but um, hallelujah. All weekend, I was just singing song to God because God has been good. So let's go into the word of God this morning. We'll be, uh, we're still in the, um, still talking about waiting on the Lord. Waiting on the Lord. You know, as I said last time, you know, last time we, we really um, stopped, we, we look at realizing his presence. Realizing God's presence. We don't want to be like Jacob. Jacob says, what? Well, uh, I didn't know you was here, God. I didn't know you were here. But we want to know that God, we want to know, we want to have that knowing in the inside that God is always there. The word of God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Never leave nor forsake you. So God, is comf- God hold his word. To his feet. He cannot lie. And when God said he would not leave you, he mean it. Not like man, man say, well, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't leave you. But God would stand sure. So hallelujah. So let's turn to our Bibles to Psalm. Hallelujah. Psalm one three nine. Psalm one three nine. And we're starting from verse 22. And we are going to zero in. Um, the topic today will be wait on him for cleansing. Wait on him for cleansing. We have, we have already touched on realizing the presence of God. We touch on waiting on the Lord. Don't be hurry. So today, the cleansing. The cleansing. We all need cleansing. We all need cleansing. Growing up when you're small, your mother always take you to the bathtub. And the bathtub where the water is, that you have to put you into the bathtub and wash you. Back home we say wash. You know, some other countries will say bathe. Some other countries will have a different language. But in all, it talks about cleansing the outside. Dirt. You know, when the children go out or when you go to work. And not even according to the job that you're doing, we all need to take a shower. We all need to take a shower. So every morning we rise, take a shower. Why take a shower? Because... We, we, are, we, we are human beings, we sweat, perspiration, it may smell, some people, you know, smell, some people don't put the oil around, but we all need to wash this body that God has given us. But this cleansing is the inside, hallelujah, because you could wash all the parts on the outside. You know the past I'm talking all over, all over, right? But the inside, dirty. The inside is corrupted. The inside is not lining up with the word of God. The inside is operating the works of flesh, greed, and, and but, um, hatred. And we will see here that the, the, the psalmist, that hatred, you could be nice dressing outside. Many times we go to places, church, wherever, and we put on all the makeup, hairdo, bow tie, whatever, suits, but you're inside. That's why we all have to search our inside we all have to look within us and see if it's giving God the glory. If it's giving God the glory. 
I know what I like about this. We were studying, um, we were studying this about two days back. You know, that man look at the outside, but God look at the inside. And this is what we want to look into. Look into this and allow the Spirit of God to cleanse us. Only Him alone can cleanse us. Only God. So let's go into the word. Psalms 1, 3, 9, 22. I hear them with complete hatred. I'm reading from English standard by uh, English Standard Version. I call them my enemies. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous ways in me and lead me to the everlasting hmm, or lead me in the way of everlasting hallelujah as we can see here that the service right he is asking god to search his heart he's asking god to search his heart how many of us really sit down and say, God, search my heart. Search my heart. Sometimes we think that we can hide from God. But as we know that God knows even the thought is the all-knowing God. The all-knowing God. Mm -hmm. Psalm uh, verse verse 21 let's go to verse 21 say i do not hate those who hate you oh god and do i not love those who rise up against you now he hate those who hate good he hate those who hate good so we can see that this hate that this that the psalmist is talking is not is not shame it's not it's not a shame of of saying i hate those who hate you right but we are to love right god call us to love right and but he did not call us to agree with wicked to agree with those who blaspheme us who blaspheme god who curse god right so this hatred, you could say that, you know, you just don't like what they have done, right? So, because when we hold hatred in our hearts, we give in room for the enemy. When we hold those works of darkness, we give in the enemy to come in. But the hate to the wrong is a righteous hate. To the enemy, it's a righteous hate because they blaspheme God. Right? We are to love God, not curse God. Right? We are to love God. So he said, Search me, oh God, and know my heart. You know, we sometimes, you know, we talk to God in some kind of manner. You know, like if we, you know, we talking with one of our friends or families, but we have to reverence God. We have to reverence God. You know, He is holy. He is holy. There is none is holy than our God. So He said, "I hate them, or I hate them with complete hatred." Some translation will say, "I hate them perfect." Have you ever come to a point? of hating someone completely. When I say completely, I mean complete, total completely. From the head to the to the toes or the sole of the feet. Every time you see that person, hatred inside of you. Even if the person talk, <laughs> you hate that person. Maybe 
they done you something wrong. Maybe, I don't know. But what's in your heart? What's in your heart? Because we, as we, our topic is waiting on the Lord. And in the waiting, we have to search our hearts. God have to search our hearts to see if our hearts are lined up with the word of God. To see if we are hating our brothers, if we are hating our sisters. Because we could, I'm telling you, human being, when it comes to hate, <laughs> they really hate. Especially when they don't get what they ask for. Especially what, what they ask for. So here we see that he hate, uh, he hate the wicked. He hate the wicked. And you could see that perfect hate rise up in him. He said, I hate them with complete hatred. I call them my enemy. Mm, hallelujah. He called them his enemy. So you could see that they have done him wrong. Come wrong they maybe have done him something for for that hatred to rise up with inside of him when you say completely completely means completely whole holds that means there is no we can say no short way no hole but everything there's just hate inside of him and we have to be careful we have to be careful not to allow that hate that hate inside of us. So when we when I read verse 22, right? Verse 22. It says that, you know, we may have done, you know, they have done done him wrong, but if they are opposed to God and his laws and to a great principle of truth and righteousness. So you see, they oppose God. So this is why he hated me. Because they oppose God. I remember one time, someone was doing, and uh, this person asked me for something, and I said, um, you know, I can't give it to you. And he started, to, oh, you are Christian, you are this and that, oh, I hate you, Christian, and all that hatred going on. And he forget that God breathed life into him. God breathed life into him. Many people walk around hating God, hating the Christians. Even now, uh, when look at remember when Saul, before he turned Paul, he went about what killing the Christians, and in him it was right. In him was for him to do it. He felt good, but was it good in the eyesight of God? That's why God had was to strike him down, blind him, and change him. Because without God stepping into our life, we will remain the same condition. We will remain the same condition. What's in your thought right now? What is going on? What is going on in your thought right now? You know, sometimes, or many times, I, I see, I've noticed, what's going on inside will begin to reflect on the outside. Your home, your businesses, your family, your car, all these things will be affected. So whether good or bad, it will have an effect. When you go into someone's home and you see garbage all over the floor, I've witnessed that, all over the floor. I say, my God, they look so pretty. Hairdo, everything, nails long, speaking well. But what happened? The inside, the inside. We have to allow the Spirit of God to search 
آقای مصر because man may not see it at that point but God sees it he knows our thought and this searching is really investigation what is happening in the inside of you sometimes we put mask on to try to cover it but how long the mask gonna last so now you put the makeup blushes all kind of things but how long so each one of us have to allow the spirit of god to search in us because there is things in us that is not of god all of us even i all of us have to allow the spirit of god to work in us and let him prune and let him cut pull out things that is not supposed to be there all of us so he said search me O lord and know my heart search me O lord that sounds like somebody said okay god <laughs> search me now search me he was so confident in him you ever somebody some people they're so confident that search me and see if you see anything. You know, like we go um, in the airport and you know the 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 package by you know and they look into it and there's things to find inside it. The search me, God. But we have to come to God, humble. Lord, Lord, you know, search me. I may not see what's happening inside, but you know. Go to the depth. Bring out things that God that I'm not aware of. Because your desire is to walk. Your desire is to be like him. So if your desire is to be like God, you know, when I say be like God, you, you want to be conformed to his son, Jesus Christ. We are to be conformed to his son, Jesus. And by that conform conformity is a day-to-day -day progress. A day-to-day -day is a cutting off. A day-to-day -day is taking off all the old man, the old ways, the old habits. And allowing the spirit of God to rest in us, allowing the Spirit of God to abide in us. Hallelujah. So in this waiting, is a washing. You ever see when cars go into the, uh, what do they call it? I, I can't remember the name, but they go in there and they, they car wash, yes. And a long line, they have to wait because they want the car to look good. What is the sense? You're waiting and then you're not going to get your car washed. And sometimes we operate the same way. We're waiting on God, but we find God taking too long. Let me do what I have to do. Let me do what is inside my heart. God don't understand. He's taking too long. So what inside my heart I am going to do? And sometimes you will counsel a person and you will give them sound advice. But they choose not to. Why? Because they hurt me. They do me this. They do me that. And we go out now. And we act on what is inside of us. You know how many people end up in prison or in the grave just of a split second. It can happen to any one of us. A split second. Any one of us. None of us is exempted. But we thank God for his grace. So by waiting on God in his presence, you allow the spirit of God 
to search your heart. See where that you yourself have been wrong. Because some, not, not sometimes, it's on both sides. We could do or have done someone wrong. And we would think it's right. Right? But actually, it's wrong. And there are some, they know it wrong, and they would not apologize. They would not apologize. So that's why God wants to search our hearts. The psalmist says, search me, O God, and to know my heart. The heart is there, talking about. See what is inside my mind. My mind. And all of us have to renew our mind. That's why Paul says, renew the mind. Renew the mind. The heart is for what? The blood. To pump through the vein. The mind is to retain the word of God. So we're allowing the word of God to wash us. That's why the scripture says the word of God is to wash, change our stinking thinking so that we begin to think as God thinks. We begin to see as God sees. So when God begins to search us and he finds things in us, God will take it out. Sometimes we don't want God to take it out because we love it. How many of us so love the desire of sex or desire of, of what? You know, going and, and, and steal or the desire of the work of the flesh. There is so much names. I wouldn't have enough time to even call those names. But if you get what I'm saying, the work of the flesh is of the enemy. And most times, we baggage them inside of us. We baggage them inside of us. And we judge others. But we ourselves walking in it or holding it. We quick to judge. Oh, but you yourself, there's more than one baggage inside there. And we try to hide it. We try to cover it up. No one will see. But the psalmist says, search me because you understand that God knows the, his thoughts. Before every word come out of our mouth, God knows. What an awesome God. Try me. Prove me. Try me. Psalm 26 and 2. Let's go there. Psalm 26 2. Prove me, O Lord, and try me. Test my heart and my mind. Mm. Imagine. He doesn't go try me. <laughs> my God. Hallelujah. So he's confident. He maybe don't have, he maybe, he maybe have. Sometimes we are so confident, we don't even know what we have. You know, like, a, you know, a police come to search you, right? Because they, you know, they, they will say, well, okay, he looks, uh, you know, suspicious. That's the thing. And we're so confident. Some people, Police might put the, the evidence in their pocket and you don't even know. Oh, search and I have nothing. Right? Yeah, there, there are people who are wicked. They will do it. They will do it. But the psalmist said, try. See if, see if there's anything inside of me. God knows your thoughts. God knows your thoughts. That's who he is. 
the God we serve, there is nothing that we can hide from him. If you notice, he is working in the inside, not the outside. In the Old Testament time, it was more on the outside. But in the New Covenant, it's the inside job. The inside job. That's why we have to pray for the Holy Ghost to give us discernment. Spiritual discernment because people will come into your life and you don't know what is their motive or intention. They will look good, speak well. They will say, yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. What do you want? Can I open the door for you? Can I cross your, uh, uh, across the, uh, the street? Can I hold the umbrella? All well. But they are waiting for the opportunity to unleash what's the inside. But how would you know if you don't spend time in God's word, in the presence of God? Don't be hurried, but hear God. We are trusting God in our ministry. We are trusting God to hear God. We are trusting God to clean our ears and to clean our hearts and our mind. That we can be led by the Spirit of God. That's, that's our heart's desire. And we know that God will intervene. Because our desire is to walk in the ways that God has called us to walk. I'm not saying that there will be no bumps and, and hurdles. There will be. But in it, we trust in God. In it, we want to see the hand of God working in our life, in the ministry, and outward. So search us, search us. All of us need to come before the almighty God every day. Lord, search me. Search me. There's things inside, deep in my subconscious. From way back, from when I was born. That's how far it goes. And even goes further than that. There are things lies in each one of us. And only the Spirit of God could detect that. What a good and mighty God we say. What a good and mighty God we say. So try me, prove me. God will allow situations. God will allow things to come your way. It's not to kill you. Hmm. It's not to destroy you. But it's what? It's to strengthen you. It's to strengthen you. So don't get mixed up with trials. Right? Don't get mixed up with trials and tests. Trials come to do what? Make us strong. Test desires of evil. God would not tempt us with evil. Go with evil. He would not. He's a good God. So when those tests of evil come, of desire, is what you have inside of you that you are harboring all this time, and because of what it's it, because it, it has been growing and maturing more and more, it needs to come out. It needs to come out. But in order to have that, we have to allow the Spirit of God 
to work in us every day. Every day. You will not be perfect like God. No. You will not be holy like your mighty God. Why? Because of the sin that was transferred to us. Adam and Eve. We have sinned before God. And while we are on the earth, we will battle with that until Christ comes. So if you think that you are going to be holy on this side, on this earth, with no sin, with no shortcoming, <laughs> well, I don't know where you are right now. That's why God gave us the Holy Spirit. He is the one to do what? To search us. He is the one to prune us. He perk us. He, what will you again? He sustains us. That's what the Spirit of God does. He is the one to nudge you and tell you, listen, don't go there. Don't do that. Because it is not lined up with the Word of God. With the word of God. Know my thoughts, as I said. Some of us have some kind of thought. <laughs> I want to make, imagine, imagine you in church and all of a sudden they put up a big screen, right? And you're seeing everybody thought on the screen while the word of God preaches. <laughs> you can imagine your, what your neighbor said about, oh, oh. Look, look who, look what she think, or look what he thinking. The neighbor judging, but he, but they're not seeing their own thoughts. Most of the time we do that, as I said, we judge others. So let's be careful. Let us be careful. You know, all of us have weights inside of us and we need to give it to God give it to God he said cast all your cares and burdens for he carried for you let us not hold hatred and malice jealousy self-ambition all these works of the flesh in us let us begin to offload it. Let us begin to take it out because it weighs us down. It's going to weigh you down. How can you run the race with all this baggage on your shoulder? How can you reach to the finish line? Because sin is a weight and a very heavy weight is to bring you down, is to destroy you, destroy your thoughts, destroy even your image. Remember, God said, What well, we are made in the image and the likeness of God. Sometimes we sell our image, we sell ourselves short. Not understanding that you were made in the image of God. And God desire for you to rise, desire to you to be an overcomer. But if we allow the sin, we allow the baggage, you cannot be an overcomer. Two days back, I was talking. This guy called me and we were talking. And... Uh, he started giving me a story about, you know, um, I was I was to know about what's your purpose in life? What's your purpose in life? Many people are walking around purposeless, purposeless, no aim, no goal, and especially the young generation. It's sad, especially the young generation. Yes, it have older. Because they're still carrying. It is sad 
when one reached to an age of understanding that they have not or even have an idea what it is that they want in life. When you understand the purpose, your purpose, you grow, you mature, you focus. Jesus understand his purpose. Paul understand his purpose. Why? Even though he, he was shipwrecked, even though he was beaten, even though he was in prison, he still stayed focused on the mission, on the call upon his life. What's your call on your life right now? Are you searching for the call? Are you searching for purpose? Are you searching for destiny? Are you searching? All of us search. Each one of us, every day, we search for something. But today I want to know what it is that you're searching because the Spirit of God searches our heart. So it tells me you also search. Some search to get rich. Some search to be a millionaire. Some search to be a doctor. Some search to be a plumber. In what form or the other, we all search. Some search to seek God knowledge and understanding. Wisdom. What is your search today? Only you can answer that. Only you can answer that. But the Spirit of God is the same. We search our hearts to see if there's anything that needs to come out so that you'll be able to give God praise. Sometimes our praise can reach nowhere. Why? It is stifled. It is suppressed by the sin, suppressed by the baggage, suppressed by greed, suppress all these things bring it up. We can't even breathe to say, God, that's what sin does. But when we give it to God, when we say, God, search me and, and take these things out of me so I can praise you. Sin brings us into slavery. We are slave, tied up, bound up. How can you praise God when sin has tied you up and bound you up? Again, only God, it takes only God himself to come and loose those chains that seems to bind you. And I pray today that we will go to the word of God. We will go to God himself. And as a psalmist say, Lord, Search me. Lord, I don't know what's inside. But I want to follow you. I want to, to walk in your ways. But there are things, Lord, is holding me back. It's holding me back. You may be in a place that you want to decide the things of God. You want to be you know, born again. You want to, to walk in the things of God. But because of where you are, things begin to latch onto you, to, to your feet, like chain. You ever see those um, movies or, or even our slaves, they have those chain, they chain them on their feet. And they put a, a, a weight that they can run. That's what sin is. Sin causes to be in one place. Sin causes to be in a deep hole that cannot come out. Dark 
like a dungeon, cold and wet, and crying all day, depressed, no light, no joy, no happiness. Do you want to stay in that kind of situation? Do you want to stay in a place where there's darkness, depression, no love, no joy, no peace? That's the fruit of the Spirit. And God wants to give it to us. But some of us say, God, I love where I am. I'm not ready. But my friends, I want to let you know. I want to let you know that he's coming. When will you be ready? When you have, you, uh, you, you put all the things together, your bank account together, by the time you're going to be ready, it'll be too late. Salvation is now. And as God leads you to hear the word of God, harden not your heart in the day. This day, not yesterday, but tomorrow, this day. So as you open your heart to God, as we all open our hearts to God, Lord, we come to you, Lord. Lord, as the psalmist says, search me. Lord, we have done wrong before you, God. We rise up in the morning, God, and we've done wrong, God. Forgive us, O oh Lord. Lord, we want to stay in the blessedness, O oh God. Lord, we want to come out of the darkness. Lord, we want to have a mind of Christ. We don't want uh, that stinking thinking all every day in our life that causing us to go wrong and wrong, Lord. Lord, we want to be in your presence. And oh God, search us and remove what needs to be removed, Lord. And so that God, that we can praise you. We can praise you, oh God. Lord, we can uh, 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 have the benefits and joy, the benefits that, Lord, that you have provided for us. Help your people this morning, God. Help those that, Lord, is crying out to you. Lord, Lord they have been searching. But only you, God. Only you, God. Hallelujah. You have all the answers. You know all things, God. And we thank you. That, Lord, that we will be a people that will seek your face. We will be a people, God, that will investigate in your word and find germs and find treasures, that, Lord, that we can hold on to as we walk in this life, Lord. Help us to be a light. Help us to be a, a people of love and concern for others, Lord. Let us not be a people that walk, oh God, with our nose up and our, and our eyes up, Lord, and our chin up. But let us be a people of humility, humble to one another, respecting one another, God. Showing the love of God that is inside of us, Lord. We thank you this morning, God. Lord, that no longer we will allow the weight of sin to hold us back. Because God, you have set us free. You have broken the chain that seems to bind us, God. And we thank you, O oh Lord God. For all that you have done, Lord. Father, I pray right now for those, oh Lord God, looking for job opportunities, those that are sick, those that are brokenhearted, those that are unsaved. Lord, visit them, Lord. 
Visit them where they are in the name of Jesus. And shine your lights upon them, God. Let your countenance be upon them in the name of Jesus. Mm. Glory to God. Oh, Father, we thank you. We look unto you, God, who is the maker of heaven and earth. And Father, Lord, as you look down on us today, Lord, we thank you. We praise you, God, that our heart, oh God, will be right to you, that you can use us for your glory. Father, we thank you for that soul that say yes to you. That soul, oh God, that is, oh God, with open arms, oh Lord, you welcome it, that it can feast at your table. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Holy Ghost, move, touch, deliver, strengthen, revive. In the name of Jesus. Amen. God bless you. And I want to encourage you, Friday, not Friday, Wednesday, we are still on uh, spiritual warfare. We started last week. Don't miss out. Spiritual warfare. We're in a battle. We are in a battle. Don't ever think that you're not in a battle. But when you are in the battle, put on Christ. Let Christ be your armor. Let Christ be your inner armor and your outward. Let Christ be the center. Let Christ fight the battle. The battle is the Lord. We just have to walk in God's word and let God do the rest. God bless you. Be encouraged. Walk in the blessings of God. S-O-W-C of the word. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' mighty name. And let all God's people say, Amen. Glory. Oh, I love you. I love you in the name of Jesus. God bless you. Hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God.